Hey, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another motivational through the Bible. All right, let's see. Today's word for the day is going to be basically a verse that I've been looking at the last couple of days. First of all, I'm here in the Xterra. If you've watched the last few videos, you've seen the potential. And this is a great vehicle, you know, it's awesome. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good adventure vehicle. I got my festive uh, clothes on today. My brother Gordy got me this shirt and went to Hawaii. It was one of his lifelong dreams. He pursued it and finally got to go. So, sorry about that. I mean to keep slamming you on the ground. Around the dashboard. But anyways, I um, guess I could blend a couple of words or just keep it to one focused word. Um... I guess I could pick up where I left off and then I'll add on one other word. The other day I talked about this great deal because uh, I discovered a Fender at a guitar store. So I rushed home and got mine and I wanted to trade it in for that Fender. Well, lo and behold, when I get to the store, the guy's a drummer, he's not a guitarist, but he's there managing the store and he's like as I begin to look deeper at this fender because you can't get one for less than about 800 a genuine made in America fender and I'm going to trade my made in Mexico one that I got for $85 which sometimes even sell those upwards of 300 I'm going to sell this thing this is what I got going on in my mind I'm going to sell it Mexican one to him for he's gonna give me he said I think 30 bucks and then I'm gonna get that applied to the $45 which is 30% off and then I'm gonna get this $800 guitar you know that's my awesome dream so I get there I start looking in a little deeper and I notice the top of the neck of this guitar is layered in like an eighth of an inch of shellac very unprofessionally glazed over a Fender Made in America sticker. So I asked the gentleman, I say, is this an actual Fender? And another giveaway is I look on the back and all Fenders Made in America, there's a, it's about that big of a piece and it goes over the neck where the neck is screwed in right where it joins to the body. And it says Fender and it'll have a serial number. This doesn't have that, it's just got a shiny one. So the alarms are going off and I ask him, I'm like, is this a genuine made in America Fender? He's like, no. And all of a sudden my hopes and aspirations went boom. Because I realized this is a fake. It's a knockoff. It's not real. It's not genuine. It's probably worth the 150 price tag on it, but not the 800. It's a fake, man. Counterfeit. Rip off. But he was honest enough to say it wasn't. And of course, I've been studying these videos so I can spot a ripoff a million miles away, man. This isn't real. How am I going to tie this into biblical spiritual principles? Well, there's a lot of fakes out there. A lot of counterfeits. As a matter of fact, Christ said one of the signs of the last days would be false teachers. False ministers. And that would be the sign of the times. A bunch of false ministers, false prophets. He said they just abound everywhere. Now, I'll go into a couple of them and a couple of telltale signs of the truth and the fake. Number one, if someone prophesies something to you and it doesn't happen, it's fake. It's obvious. If a guy says, hey, sell everything you got. In 2017, August, the world's going to end. Give me your money. Sell everything. Join me in my Nike swoosh cult. Sell everything. It's the end of the world. August 2017 rolls around. Still here. Don't follow him. False prophet. Elizabeth G. White, founder of the Seventh Day Adventist. Another guy says, hey, guess what? I got figured it out, man. I calculated all the Bible. And I got the end of the world, man. This is when it's going to happen. Well, guess what? It didn't happen. So the guy that made that prediction said, you know what? I was wrong. I was false. Forgive me. 
LMG White's going mad with all this. <laughs> I can calculate the end of the world, spirituality. So she buys into it and keeps going on and on and writing more things and adding and adding and adding. It's false. Jesus said, no one knows the day nor the hour of the end of the world. Only God in heaven. He doesn't even allow the angels to know. So people can get pretty close. You can see the signs, the wars, the rumors of wars. Earthquakes, famines, uh, the Jews being reestablished in Israel. Um, the son of perdition, he's going to come and promise world peace. The Antichrist, but those that don't follow Christ will follow him. Okay, but strong delusion, it says, is going to go on the loss, so they won't know. They won't spot a counterfeit. It's like someone who hasn't been studying the true fenders. They might buy a fake and think this is real. The most serious guitarists know fakes. All right, so what's, what's another sign of a fake, man? A fake prophet, a fake religion. Well, Paul said in the last days there would be many who would see the way as a means of financial gain. And because of them, the way, Christianity would be evil spoken of. Let's break it down. Let's, let's, let's interpret this verse. In the last days, there would be many who would see the way, who would see Christianity as a means of financial gain. And because of them, Christianity would be evil spoken of. All right, so you got these people going on TV. It was funny, man. I saw this guy. I was at a military school getting ready to do some training. And I was watching TV in the barracks. And I saw this guy. And he was actually in Hawaii with a Hawaiian shirt on. He goes, I'm at the, I'm at the retreat here, the prosperity retreat. And I just keep getting a number in my mind. It's $80. Send your $80 gift. And you're going to prosper this year. Give me $80. Come on. Send it. Send it. Send it. Does God need your $80 to prosper you? No. Of course. Now, he's not a slight tangent, but here's a little bit about tithing. My son always asks me to peel him oranges. Always asks me to get him fruit. And I gladly do it. And I give it to him. But do you think it's wrong if maybe if I give him an orange, I get one-tenth of it and eat it myself? Just for doing all that? And maybe he says, thank you, Dad. I don't need that, but it's respectful. So if God is blessing you at your job and you love God and you want to say, hey, you gave me this food, this clothing, this car, you know, it's only fitting that I at least say thank you and honor you with a percentage of it. And that's the biblical truth. And you can see right through the people that want financial gain. Oh, man, I don't want to judge them too hard because I know God will judge them at the end of the world. But most likely, if there's a minister saying, I got to get my Lear Jet, I got to get it. I just, I can't minister to the world without my Lear Jet. <laughs> oh, give me money, 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 money. Okay. In the book of Acts, they looked at this guy. He was a sorcerer. It was a wicked guy practicing spells and magic. And the apostles were going around with the gift of the Holy Spirit and they were casting out demons and devils, right? People are walking, the blind are seeing, they're praying in tongues, they're doing all this stuff with the Holy Spirit. I emphasize the word Holy Spirit was upon them, right? Well, this sorcerer looked at him and he said, can I buy this gift from you so that I may perform these miracles? How much money? And they looked at him and they said, you're full of evil, wickedness, you're cursed, you're blind. Can I buy the gift of God with money? And at that moment, this sorcerer was blinded and went around looking for someone to lead him. You cannot buy God's favor. If someone says, send me money to get God's favor, send me some money. Send me $80,000 and then God will love you. Can I, could my son buy my favor? I just love him because he's my son. God loves you because you're his child. Okay? So, a couple things. Recap false prophets. They predict the end of the world. No one knows the day nor hour. They're after money. They're after money. And you know there's false doctrines out there. Doctrines of demons, doctrines of devils. Well, how do you know it's a doctrine of demon or doctrine of devil? The only way to know 
a real fender from a fake is study the real one real good. Then when the fakes come along, you can say, I match them up fake. So study the Bible, which we believe is good and holy word of God. If some other doctrine comes in that's counter to it, toss it out. Case in point. You've got the Book of Mormon and the New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witness Bible does not agree with the regular Bible. It's like as if I wrote you a letter in English, you translated it in Spanish, and the Spanish was exactly what I said in English, and I verified it. But then all of a sudden, someone came in, they didn't like what I said, so they changed it all, and then someone said, wait, I've looked at the Spanish letter and the English letter of William Lansdowne, and you distorted everything he said. That's what they did with the book of the New World Translation, okay? Number one, in the Bible, it says Jesus was hung on a cross. In the New World Translation, they say a stake. Um, you know, in the Bible, it says this world's going to melt away, melt away with fervent heat. It's going to be gone. In the New World Translation, they're trying to say it's going to last forever. But basically, they took the New World Translations to scholars. People can read Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. The languages the Bible was written in. And they said, none of this is matching up. We can't agree with it. So the Jehovah's Witnesses took it to a spirit medium. The people that God denounced in the Old Testament said, have nothing to do with sorcerers and spirit mediums and witchcraft. They're of beals above the devil, Satan. Don't follow them. And they had that person translate it. So don't follow the New World Translation. All right, then you got the Book of Mormon. This is just a total another Bible, another Christ, and another thing. But it's not a Bible. It's not truth. It's all about a false group of people who lived, who did not live in America, 12 tribes of Israel, who they say was here but never existed. The tribes of Israel are the Bible, there's archaeological evidence, and guess what? The people are still there. You probably go to any synagogue in America, and people will say, yeah, I'm, a ben I'm from Benjamin, I'm from Judah, I'm from Reuben, or Dan, or whatever. You know, the 12 tribes, right? So what you've got to do is be careful. Now, you can look at archaeological evidence and go over to Israel and see all of this stuff, right? But you can't do none of that with the Book of Mormon. It's another gospel. It's fake. And its teachings do not coincide with the New Testament. In the New Testament, they say, let the... let uh, A minister must be the husband of one wife. One wife! Joseph Smith said, yeah, get a bunch of wives. Get a bunch of wives. In the Book of Mormon, they say that Lucifer and Jesus were equal and they both had a plan for saving man. In the Bible, Jesus is the Son of God above Lucifer. You know, Lucifer was subject to him. So you want to be careful, all right? So stay away from false religions. Now let me end it with one last verse that will encourage you. Go to Psalm 9 and go to Psalm 46 and you're going to see there some great verses. The theme of these verses, right now I'm passing a Jehovah's Witness right there. False religion, man. Don't go there. It's false. They worship a, a thing that's completely false. It's sad. Now we got to warn them because if someone was going to buy a fake fender for 800 bucks and I knew what a real one looked like, would I be a good friend if I let them buy a fake one? No. And if you see someone going on a fake religious tangent and you're really following God and Christ and you've got the Bible and you at least got to warn them. Say, this stuff's false, man. It's like one of my best friends. I was always saying, dude, why go Mormon? Why go Mormon? Come on, it's false. And I would give him the truth. And he's like, dude, you don't like me or else you endorse my religion. You found me and I'm saying it's the opposite, man. If I wasn't your friend, I'd let you follow this cult. But because I am, I warn you. Okay? I warn you. So let me give you the last. Go read Psalm 46 and Psalm 9. Within that it says, God is a fortress to those who put their trust in Him. He's a fortress to the oppressed. To those who know His name, He is like a strong tower. Like you ever see a chess set? You got the rook. It's that castle. 
God is that to you when you seek Him, when you're in league with Him. So do that. The false Christ, Jim Jones, did he save those people? No. He got them to drink the Kool-Aid. They all died. David Koresh saying he was Jesus and God. Did he save the? He said he was Jesus and the devil. Did he save the people? No, he led them to their destruction. They all burned up in a building with him because the government's like, i got to shut this down. It's crazy. I won't get into all that. But look at where the false prophets led people to their demise, okay? So I really hope and pray you take this message deep in your spirit and you enjoy it. God is your refuge when you know his name and you seek him. He's a strong tower protecting you. Have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this through the Bible.